G'day and welcome back to RC Model Review. Something a bit different now. This is the Futaba T6K radio set. Now I haven't reviewed a radio for a while, so it'll be interesting to take a look at this. Most of the reviews I've done have been of sort of unbranded or no name, I suppose you might call them radios, you know. But the problem these days is that the, the cheaper radios are offering so much bang for your buck. How does something like the Futaba T6K compete when it's got to carry that expensive Futaba brand and be built um, supposedly to a higher standard? But I know there are a lot of people who are basically brand loyal out there. They like to buy their favourite brand of radio and maybe they want to see the Futaba reviewed on RC Model Reviews. So that's what I'm going to do. And let's take a look at some of the features first. Well, obviously this is the basic radio. It's a convenient size. It's nice. It doesn't have an external antenna. It's all built into the handle. Well, it's actually just under here. I'll show you when I tear it apart. There's a uh, uh, PC antenna built into the radio. It's got switches as they all do. We've got that's a three position, that's a three position, three position, two position. So that's pretty damn good because you can't have too many three position switches. Now one thing that I noticed is missing is there's no trainer switch. Quite often in radios you have a little switch that's spring loaded you can use when you're buddy boxing. This doesn't have one. So it may not be the best choice of radios if you want to be training other people because you're going to have to flick a switch backwards and forwards. Much nicer if that trainer switch is spring loaded. So you just let it go and you've got control back if you're the master when you're teaching someone to fly. Now dual axis sticks, the sticks actually feel okay, remember this isn't a top end radio, it is an entry level radio, sticks feel okay, yep yeah, they're fine, it's got the trims positioned quite comfortably, easy to reach. There's a knob up here, this knob is an analog control, it can be used to do a number of things, it's pretty programmable through the radio itself. There are no sliders, see that, none on the side, none on the back, that's a big down, big mark off in my book, I love sliders because as I reviewed, as you saw when I reviewed the Hobby King Cloud Surfer, it's so much nicer to be able to just apply your flaps while you're still flying the model, instead of having to reach up to a knob like you'd have to in this, if you want to put flaps on there, reach up to it, or you'd have to use one of these three position switches and not have the benefits of being able to proportionally apply your flaps in small increments to suit the conditions. But there you go. Now Futaba have pitched this as being great for the multi-rotor community and the mini quad racing community. Um, because it's got telemetry, has built-in telemetry, and it has voice prompts, but I'm sorry, they, they really missed the ball, because although it has voice alerts and things, they, these little speakers here, you, I haven't found a way to get them to speak through that. You have to use the plug on the back and an earbud, which is, okay, that's pretty useful if you're flying with a group of other people, but if you're just flying on your own, it's annoying to have to use an earbud to get the telemetry alert. I mean, what's going on there? Why can't you just have it through the little speakers? I mean, the Tyrannus manages to do that, the Turnergy 9XR Pro manages to do that. Surely a brand like Futaba could manage to do that. Okay, let's turn it on. One thing I do like about this is the LCD screen. It is actually one of the best LCDs I've seen on a radio at any price. A really high contrast black and white LCD works really well. Now the interface to this radio is, because everyone has their own idea of what's the best interface. All the manufacturers opt for different things. Uh, some just have buttons, some have scroll wheels, some have touch screens. This one has three buttons and a joystick which also operates as a button. So to go into the menus we just hold down the plus button, here we go, and it's simplicity itself. I mean you don't need a manual to drive this thing. You've got two-way um, navigation with the joystick and when you've reached the position that you want to think just hold the button down and you select it. It's that simple and there's an exit button to go out. I mean all the things you could want are there. It's got uh, a bunch of stuff, including telemetry and sensor setup. It's S bus and S bus 2 if you've got the right receiver. Um, yeah, timer does have a trainer capability, but again, that, that non spring loaded trainer switch is a down on that. Throttle cut for old school nitro flyers, um, dual rate expo, throttle curves, idle down, um, gyro setup for your helicopters, and VTAIL setup. Of course, there is other mixing as well. If we go through to, should have P-Mix somewhere or something like that. Yeah, there we go. There's the P-Mix. So you can set up your own mix. It's pretty full function. You know, you expect that from a computer radio these days. You don't expect there'd be anything other than everything you want. And if we go back to the main screen, you see it's got voltage here. This is the transmitter voltage. It takes four AA cells. Again, oh, I don't like that. First time I tried to fire this up, it wouldn't work because the battery holder in the back, let's turn that off, battery holder in the back with the four AA cells, it was making an 
improper contact on one of these cells and I had to fiddle around for ages to get it to actually even go because these things are the devil spawn these battery holders these AA battery holders do not use these throw them away and put in an LIFE battery or something you know a, a nice battery that doesn't rely on spring-loaded contacts you do not want to be flying your model and suddenly discover oh suddenly that contact's gone bad and you've got no control oh it's terrible it's a, you know even in a budget radio these days just shouldn't have AA battery holders very very bad now we've got the typical Futaba trainer plug in the back there and there's also this which is the, I don't know what that is actually it says um, S I slash P I can't read it I've got glasses on so never mind um, yeah there's another plug in there who knows what that is probably for programming I say it's a programming interface for reflashing stuff I haven't looked I don't know now this one has got a C tick for New Zealand and Australia which is quite good I mean it's handy now one of the big bonuses of buying a brand name radio is you usually get a pretty good manual the high techs have an excellent manual the Futaba also comes look how thick this damn thing is look how much stuff there is in there um, buy yourself a 10 9x you don't get anything you've got to go online and find the manual but this has a really well illustrated very well thought out manual it's pretty damn good and you can see everything is detailed here doesn't have an index unfortunately go to the back there is no index um, I don't know I kind of like an index in my manual see that's the back page there um, no index but the contents is pretty good if you go to the contents pages you'll see it's broken down pretty simply voila now getting back to the issue of telemetry this has telemetry but the receiver that comes with it is a six channel receiver and it doesn't have any way to sense lipo voltage it will it will feed back the voltage of your or that your receiver sees if you're flying an electric model that's the voltage output of your UBEC and that's just a waste of time because it's always going to be five volts or six volts depending on what you've set it to regardless of the state of your flight battery so I would have thought if this is being pitched at the multi-rotor flyers then it would have come with a sensor for measuring your LiPo battery because that's the most important piece of telemetry but it doesn't and even worse um, the receiver that comes with the standard setup has no capability to measure a LiPo voltage you can't buy an external sensor to plug in for example just it doesn't have the capability from what I can make out of the instructions there's just no LiPo sensing ability if you want LiPo sensing ability you've got to buy the 8 channel receiver which doesn't come as part of the kit so they're selling a multi-rotor radio that really isn't really suited to multi-rotors oh, I'm scratching my head on this one I really am um, so you got to go and spend another hundred bucks or so on another receiver which makes this a pretty expensive piece of gear especially when you consider that stuff like the free sky comes with with the d4r2 receiver for example another three bucks you've got your voltage sensor board and you've immediately got lipo voltage telemetry that's simple with the Futaba it's so hard and so you know complex spend a lot of extra money so Futaba uh, if you're watching this video and I certainly hope you are because I try to offer some tips and hints to all manufacturers if you want to pitch this at the mini quad or the quadcopter market two things first of all ship it with a receiver that has built-in lipo voltage monitoring capabilities without having to spend a fortune on extra sensors or hubs or whatever just something that will plug straight into the perhaps the balance port of the lipo and then plug into your receiver and give you that on-screen information also also very very important you have voice in here this will this has voice alerts but you need to be able to have them coming out the speaker people don't want to have to wear an earbud just to listen to the telemetry so you've got to do that and it's no good absolutely no good just having a vibration alert for something to remote to basically alert you to the fact an alarm condition has occurred and you have to look at the screen because if you're flying FPV you can't see the damn screen and if you're flying mini quads you probably don't have an OSD so there you go now what I'm going to do now let's take a look inside is how well this thing is built now some of the early low-end Futaba radios were to be honest a bit of a dog's breakfast they they played on the Futaba brand name with the higher end products and they produced some really badly designed and manufactured kit at the low end let's have a look inside see whether this is good or whether it's bad there are just four screws holding the back on so removing that's pretty easy undo the four screws and it should just slide apart there we go done piece of cake now there's a cable in here holding something together let's have a look and see there is this cable goes onto the main board here let's unplug that because we want to have a better look inside how easy is that going to be to unplug shouldn't be hard it's just a each PC board there we go so now we've got the back of it let's take a closer look at what's inside the Futaba T6K well it's pretty straightforward we've got two stick units as you can see now these are very nice they've got the wires to the sticks are well stress relieved here so they're not going to be pulling on the actual connections to the pots that's going to make sure this thing is reliable um, they're also 
so held up here so there's no gonna be, not going to be any problem with these tangling and causing stress or making the sticks hard to move. That's excellent. In fact, the build quality on this is looking pretty damn good. So much better than the early Futaba low-end radio. So much better. Yeah, the switches have their own circuit boards, which again is great because then instead of having wires just soldered onto a switch where they're likely to flop backwards and forwards and eventually fracture with vibration, they're well and truly properly supported. Now, interestingly, the RF module is a completely separate module and it's quite large, quite large. Perhaps that's because this does not only the uh, what is it, FHSS Futaba protocol, but also the TFHSS, which is the telemetry one. So this isn't a fast radio that doesn't have the Futaba fast system. So in terms of receivers, you're going to be using the genuine Futaba receiver. We can use something like the FreeSky Delta 8, which will work with FHSS. So there you go. It's quite good. Um, you won't be able to use your fast receivers because it just won't talk to them. Now here's that antenna I was talking about, the printed circuit board antenna up here in the top. So that just sits up there in the top of the case, out of harm's way. There's nothing to break off, which is great because of these little rubber ducky antennas, sometimes, you know, after a while they get a bit worn and the little cable inside can even fracture. So that's a really good thing. Now the whole rest of it's on this main board here and there's a really, really large board. That's only that large because they've obviously built in direct connection to the buttons and so forth over here. Saves time in manufacturing, saves costs. So. I'm not going to take that board out because it's pretty obvious there's only going to be probably one large microcontroller chip to do all the bit crunching and a little bit of pass by stuff and support circuitry. So yeah, not much to see there. I'm happy with the build quality of this. It's actually really nice. It has restored my faith in low end Futaba stuff. Um, not much else to see here. Let's move along. Okay, we've got it on the spectrum analyzer now. You can see it pinging away here on the band. I'll just lower my sensitivity a little bit to... Uh, so we can see those peaks a little better. There we go, pinging away a bit more. And what I'm going to do now, at the moment the receiver is on, so this is just pinging away, it's getting nothing back to the telemetry protocol. I'm going to plug in the receiver and we will see what happens if it changes the band use by the transmitter. There we go, receiver's plugged in. And hear the ESC beeping, there we go, so no, that's fine. So the it's using quite a bit of the band. I'm actually gonna change the um, the persistence here, the calc I think it is, and we're going to make it um, max, here we go, so this will show you how the band is, now it's actually accumulating all the hopping, so you can see it's actually spreading right across the band there, that's brilliant, so this is a pretty robust protocol, in fact interestingly enough this uses the same chipset as the FreeSky, so, and the high tech, so it's using the same chips as the high tech and the FreeSky, so you would expect it to have pretty similar performance, which is fine. It's not the FAST system, it's the FHSS, in this case the TFHSS. And that means we're getting telemetry data back. Now one thing I did notice was it's a little bit um, less output at the high end than the low end of the band. That's not a big issue. Um, that can be caused by a number of things. Might even be this, this antenna I'm using here might be slightly uh, peaky at the bottom end. I'm not really worried. It certainly seems to be filling up the band very nicely. Yeah, much better than some of the other systems we've seen on this bench. So there you go. Yeah, fine. From an RF perspective, I'm happy with that. Right, now what I'm going to do here, as you can see, I've taken the transmitter further away, so we're getting lower peaks. I'm going to, I've got the receiver unplugged at the moment, but I've got the plane with it in sitting right next to me. I'm going to plug the receiver in and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Plug the receiver in. And... You can hear the ESC beeping. Now we're getting some taller peaks starting to appear. See, these ones are taller than the ones we had before. Because what we're looking at here is the telemetry output of the receiver. This is the signal that the receiver is sending back to the transmitter. So it is outputting nowhere near as much data. As you notice, this, this isn't filled in. There's a lot more peaks, a lot more open areas. But obviously the telemetry is sending data back to the transmitter, which is what you'd expect. And it seems to be doing it um, using a reasonable amount of the band. But most of the stuff down here, below that level, is actually the transmitter. So we're getting the occasional peak. There's really not enough data there to get a good information from. But yeah, there you go. I mean, it seems to be, yeah, it's filling out the band. So yeah, that's, the telemetry is going to be robust as well. Excellent. Radio, there it is, the Futaba T6K, the latest six channel entry level radio from Futaba. And let me just say right from the get go, if you're a, ro a loyal Futaba brand customer, if you value the brand Futaba above all else, you will like this radio. It's built well. Wonderful build quality, excellent, super good for the uh, for a six channel radio. It's got a really good LCD display. It's got lots of three position switches. It's got the built-in antenna. It's got telemetry-ish, not what I'd call good telemetry, but it's got telemetry. 
Um, it's got everything you probably want. It's got a really resilient RF link. It's not fast. It doesn't have the fast system. So you will have, to, if you've got a whole lot of fast radios or really fast receivers, you're thinking, I'll buy this and I can use my old receivers. Well, you can't. You've got to have the SFHSS or the TFHSS receivers for this radio. Um, so, you know, if, if you're an existing Futaba customer and you don't have any of those receivers, then you're going to have to start buying your receivers to use with this radio. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's true. And that, but that 2.4 system is, is quite resilient. We've been flying this on the FMS Super Easy Trainer um, over the weekend. Lots of people had to fly and they all loved it. And this radio worked really well. No one had any gripes. It's brilliant. It's great for that. For four channel, basic four channel stuff, this is really good. If you want to fly Nitro or um, a small gasser, this is really good. It even comes with a switch, you know, the old fashioned switches. So you have your battery for your servos and your receiver plugs into the switch and then the switch plugs in your receiver and you mount it on the model so you can turn it off and on. No unplugging lipos and things like you do in electric. The old school stuff, you just have a little switch. It's wonderful. And you can even charge because it has a little lead comes out and you can charge through that lead. That's what this radio is designed for. Don't believe, don't believe what they say in the advertising. They say it's designed for helicopters and electric and multi-rotors and all that sort of stuff. No, it's not. Honestly, I, it is not. It is It is not much more really than the old, um, what was it, Sky Sport or something? What was it? The, the old four-channel system they had. Because although this is a really well-made radio, they've built something that doesn't really tick the boxes as far as most modern RC flyers are concerned. Um, and it's a bit tricky because they say, oh, yes, you know, it's it's got a multi-rotor mode. You've got glider, fixed wing, helicopter and multi-rotor model selections you can make in there. But the multi-rotor one, it has throttle delay. Uh, what's, what use is that? It doesn't have anything that's really multi-rotor related. It, it, so it, all it does is if you, if you choose the multi-rotor model type, it just disables a whole lot of the functionality in the radio. I guess that's easy, if you're useful if you want to just set it up easily. But it seems like it's a bit of a sales gimmick to say multi-rotor mode. You know, oh, you're, you're high tech and your JR have only got three modes. This has got four. Nah, it's a bit of, bit of marketing crap, I'm afraid. Um, the other thing is it says it's got telemetry. Telemetry is like a little monitor your voltages. Yes, it will if you're flying a gas plane or a nitro plane and you're only looking at that receiver voltage, receiver battery voltage. But if you're flying a multi-rotor or an electric helicopter or an electric fixed wing, I'm sorry, but out of the box, it won't monitor your LiPo voltage. Uh, in fact, if you want to monitor your LiPo voltage, the receiver that comes with it is useless. So you've got to go out and buy a new receiver. Over a hundred bucks, I think, the price of the eight channel receiver. And then you've got to buy a telemetry lead to plug that receiver into your LiPo. So your entry level six channel radio is becoming damn expensive just to do the stuff that some of these cheap Chinese radios do out of the box. As I say, it's a really well built product, but it's not been designed to be a product that's going to fit the demands of the market, in my honest opinion. As I say, if you're a Futaba fanboy, a Futaba brand law customer, you'll love this. You'll love it. There'll be no fault with it. You'll find it's great. And, and I would recommend it to you because you're never going to be disappointed with a Futaba product in terms of the quality and the durability. When the end of the universe comes and all the planets have disintegrated into dust, these things will still be floating around. You won't be able to break them. They're really, really well built. So they are incredibly durable. Buy yourself a Turnigy 9XR Pro and in a couple of years, things are going to start packing up on it. The pots are not that good at quality and the switches, they're okay, but the wiring inside, instead of having that nice little circuit board with the little connector and the wire strain relief, they just got a wire on a pot terminal and a bit of hot snot. So uh, you're getting what you pay for in terms of build quality, but they've built the wrong bloody radio in my opinion. <laughs> to have to go out and spend over a hundred dollars just to get battery telemetry means that this is not a radio out of the box that's suited to Electric model. It's not. I don't care what they say in the advertising. It's just not. And to say it's got voice telemetry, but as far as I can tell, and I've looked high and low, you only get voice out the earbud thing. And it says in some of the advertising, it comes out the speakers. I cannot get it to come out the speakers, despite this manual. Doesn't tell me how to do that. I've tried every option, can't get it to speak out the speakers. It'll beep and fart and carry on out these speakers, but it won't speak to me. I've got to put a plug in my ear. I don't want to do that. I'm far too lazy to put a plug in my ear. So, yeah, what can I say? Um, if you're looking for a good low cost six channel radio, then there, there are lots of things on the market. There's lots of radios on the market. There's brand name products, there's, there's Futaba, there's mid range products. I mean, look, here's the one I'd compare the uh, Futaba to. This is the High Tech Flash 7. Okay, it's perhaps some people say it's not a pretty radio. I mean, it looks, it's got a little face on it. See, eyes, nose, mouth. Um, the LCD isn't quite as good. The sticks, yeah, they don't feel quite as good. It doesn't have as many three position switches and it does have one of these great big long stick out break off switches. But 
But I mean, this is a, a low-end high-tech radio. It does have a trainer switch. Futaba doesn't have one of those, but it has a trainer mode. How does that work? Um, it has not one slider, but two sliders. Look, there you go. If Futaba can put two sliders on their low entry level radio, why the hell can't Futaba? It's because they designed the wrong radio. They built the wrong radio really, really well. Um, yeah, of course, it's, it's, it, there's the pros and cons. The, the high tech has the crap ass antenna there. It's going to get broken off if you mistreat it, and then you've got to send it in and get it repaired. The Futaba, it's all built inside where it should be. There's no reason to have a sticky outy antenna anymore. You don't need it. The technology's moved on. Um, so there you go, you've got the choices, it's up to you guys what you buy, but um, I wouldn't buy that radio for the kind of flying I do. And if I was just flying nitro, if I was just flying gas, yeah, I'd look at that, I'd look at that, because it's, I say, as I say, it's a really nice radio. Everyone loved it on the simple four-channel trainer, but we weren't using battery telem telemetry, and we were treating it just like a four-channel radio. And if you're going to go four channels, well, actually, there's a lot cheaper radios that deliver as much of the necessary functionality as that, um, you know, that you could buy. So it's hard to find a niche for this market, for this radio. It's hard to find something that just really fits in, except if you're a brand loyal Futaba user, you will love it. So go and buy it now. Buy it if you're a brand loyal Futaba user. If you've been using some of the cheaper Chinese stuff, you would love the improvement and build quality. But if you're looking for bang for the buck for the minimum dollar, it's probably not going to tick your boxes. It really isn't, because it's not cheap and it's even more expensive when you want to, when you want to use the features that they advertise, it does. Hmm, there you go. So now I shall don my Kevlar vest and my ceramic plates because I can hear the brand loyal Futaba users lining up at my door to deal to me in a most unpleasant fashion. I'm sorry, but that's just the facts. I just tell it like it is. Um, it's a great radio. It's, it's brilliantly built, but they just built the wrong damn thing, in my honest opinion. It's not a 21st century radio. It's a 20th century radio masquerading, and they put all sorts of stuff in there. They've really ill-coordinated it, and they could have done so much better. If they only went out and spoke to the people who were going to buy these radios instead of relying on the guy in the back room who flies 40 size trainers to design it. <laughs> Boy, I can see the people at Futaba jumping up and down now. Sorry about that guys, but that's just the way I see it. There you go. Thanks for watching. If you've got questions, if you've got comments, anything to say, stick it in the space below this video provided by YouTube and I'll do my best to answer the questions and address the comments. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I will now get my body armor on and get back to the bench. Spot you later.